Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I'm a stay-at-home wife and mom and I share these What's for Dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully motivate you to cook more for your family and to share some new meal ideas with you. I'm usually trying about three new recipes a week and you can always find those recipes listed in the description box down below. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. Friday, I had gone grocery shopping, and typically on the days that I like to go grocery shopping, I like to keep the dinners pretty simple, so I just made some burgers this night and threw some fries in the air fryer, and I think we all know how to make burgers. I just pan-fried them. Sometimes I do smash burgers, but these were just simple pan-fried cheeseburgers. I had some lettuce, tomato, pickle on the side, because I don't like pickles in my burgers for some reason. Like, I like pickles, but I do not like warm pickles. So weird. Saturday night we had shrimp and grits. This is a family favorite recipe. We absolutely love it. And I will have the original recipe that I followed down below, but I do change it up just a little bit. So to start off, I always cook my bacon in the oven and I am cooking a whole pack of bacon and I put the whole pack of bacon in it. It only calls for like six slices of bacon, but who doesn't love more bacon? So we always just cook the whole pack in the oven and put it all in there. Then I heat up my cast iron pan on the stove and to that I add a couple tablespoons of that bacon grease to cook my shrimp in. I'm just going to season my shrimp with some Cajun seasoning and then add that to that bacon grease and just let it cook until it's completely cooked through. While I was cooking my shrimp, I was also bringing four cups of water to a boil. And then once it came to a boil, I added in one cup of quick grits and one fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And I turned the heat down once it comes to a boil to like a medium low and let that continue to cook for five to seven minutes with a lid on it, stirring it like throughout that whole five minutes, like every once in a while. Then once the grits are done, I add in three tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of heavy cream, and a cup and a half to two cups of some extra sharp cheddar cheese. I just mix that all together and then I set this to the side, keep the lid on it to keep it warm. So once the shrimp was done, I removed it from the pan and then I added in like about another tablespoon of that bacon grease and then my pepper. So the recipe calls for one red pepper diced, but I don't usually buy pepper just for this. So I just do some of the little mini sweet peppers that the kids like. I usually have some red ones and some yellow ones and some orange ones. So I just cut up like one of each and toss those in there. And I let that cook for a couple minutes till the pepper starts to get tender. And then I add in some minced garlic and typically I would also add in some of the greens from a green onion, but I was out so I just added in some dried chives. And I let that continue to cook for about a minute. Then I added in a fourth a cup of chicken broth and stirred that around, like scrape up the bits from the bottom of the pan, all those little good flavorings. And I let that simmer for just a minute and then I add in the shrimp and the bacon and let that reheat a little bit for like a minute and then it's ready to serve over our cheesy grits. Everybody in my house loves these shrimp and grits. They are a family favorite for everyone. Next up we have another family favorite and this is steak and potato soup. Andy actually told me the last time that I made this soup that this is his favorite soup ever. In my crock pot, I'm adding two pounds of stew meat that I cut up into smaller pieces. They're usually kind of like big chunks, so I cut them into like one inch, like bite-sized pieces. And then I'm adding some seasoning. I'm doing about a tablespoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and some parsley. Then I added in about three cups of cubed baby gold potatoes, four large carrots that I peeled and chopped, about a fourth a cup of chopped onion. And then I do one whole bottle of steak sauce, like A1, it's a 10 ounce bottle. 
And I also make sure to rinse that bottle with a little bit of water to get it all out. And then I do four cups of water and then enough of the Nor beef bouillon powder to equal four cups of beef broth. So it's like a teaspoon of the beef bouillon powder per cup of water. So I add that in and then I give it a stir, put a lid on it and let this cook on low for about eight hours. And here is what it looks like after eight hours. Of course, check, make sure your potatoes are soft, your carrots are soft, your meat is cooked through. But after eight hours of cooking, you should have no problems. I always like to serve this with like a nice crusty bread. Sometimes I make my own. Oftentimes lately, I'm just buying the Italian bread at Aldi and stick it in the oven for 10 minutes and serving that on the side. It's absolutely delicious. And as I said, it's definitely a favorite. Next up is three packet chicken. I had made this recipe before, but the recipe that I had is in the instant pot and I wanted to try doing it in the crock pot because this was the night that the kids have martial arts and I just wanted to come home to dinner pretty much being done. So in my crock pot, I am adding a cup of water and then the three packets, which is one packet of Italian dressing mix, one packet of chicken gravy mix, and one packet of ranch dressing mix. And then I also added in some pepper. The recipe said to season your chicken with salt and pepper, but I wasn't going to just put it on the chicken. I just put it in the thing and I didn't think it needed more salt because all of those packets can be pretty salty. So I just added in my chicken breasts, spooned some of that mixture over the top of it, and then I cooked this on high for four hours because I got it started later in the day and I wanted to make sure it got done. And I don't think I should have cooked it on high for four hours because as you can see, some of the sauce kind of burnt to the sides of my crock pot. It still turned out delicious. Um, but yeah, maybe don't cook it on high for four hours or add a little bit more water. I think I, next time I would add probably about a half a cup more water. And then also if I'm going to do it on high, only do it for like three hours. Um, but it was delicious. We had it served over some mashed potatoes and with some green beans on the side. Next up, we had sticky honey chicken, which I think is a recipe that was originally sent to me from one of y'all, if I remember correctly. It's from the blog, Our Savory Life, and it's delicious. But again, I do change it up a little bit. Pretty much the only thing that I change is that I double the sauce. So to start off, I have some boneless, skinless chicken thighs that I have seasoned all over with some salt and pepper, and I'm warming up my cast iron skillet. And then to my cast iron skillet, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and some butter to cook that chicken in. So once that butter is all melted, I will just add in my chicken thighs, and I like to get a nice good sear on either side. So I will leave it alone probably about five minutes on one side, flip it over, let it cook for five minutes on the other side. And then if it's still not cooked through, I'm going to go in and put a lid on it. So kind of trap the heat in the pan so I can get that chicken cooked through. Once that chicken is cooked all the way through, I remove it from the pan and then I'm going to add in the stuff for our sauce. So I'm going to add in six tablespoons of soy sauce. Uh, you can use the like low sodium soy sauce if you're worried about the salt. And then I do two thirds of a cup of honey, six tablespoons of tomato sauce, six cloves of garlic, and about two teaspoons of sriracha. And then I mix that all together and let it simmer for about two minutes and it'll start to thicken up. After about two minutes, the sauce is thickened up a little bit, and then I'm going to stir in the juice from one lime, and then here's a way that I change the recipe. I add in some broccoli. I air fried this broccoli for about 10 minutes, so it's like part of the way cooked, and I add that in. The original recipe called for sugar snap peas, but my family just doesn't care for them, so I do broccoli because I know they like it. And then I add back in the chicken. I dice that up. You could shred it if you want to, but we for prefer it diced up. And so I add that in and just let it simmer for a few minutes in that sauce. And then we just serve this over some plain white rice. The recipe for my rice will be down below. And I also like to put some sesame seeds on top of it for those of us that like the sesame seeds. Wednesday night we had a Tex-Mex tilapia. I think I originally got this recipe from HelloFresh, 
but I had it like typed up and in my recipe binder and I was like, ooh, that sounds good. I want to make that again. You're going to see Lily's little hands here. She wanted to help me make a dinner this night, but I'm starting off by making the lime crema so I can put that in the fridge and just like let it chill while we make the fish. So for this, you just need about two tablespoons of sour cream, a little bit of lime juice, a clove of minced garlic, and some chili powder and I just keep adding lime juice until I get it to be the consistency that I want. I like it pretty thin so I just do that get it all mixed together then pop a lid on it and get that in the fridge. Next we are mixing together the breadcrumb mixture that's going to go on the tilapia. So for this you need a cup of panko breadcrumbs, two teaspoons of garlic powder, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of chili powder, and some salt and pepper. And then you're just gonna mix that together really well. Then I have my tilapia here and I have gone ahead and dried this off really well and I'm going to season both sides with some salt and pepper and then I'm going to coat them with some sour cream. I use about a tablespoon per piece of fish and then once you have them coated with the sour cream you dip them in the panko mixture and then you put them into your hot pan. I've heated up two tablespoons of vegetable oil in my cast iron pan. So you put your fish in there and then just like repeat that with all of the pieces of fish. Your fish is gonna cook for about five minutes per side. I like to serve this crispy tilapia with some cilantro lime rice and then some black beans that I season with some adobo. This is really good. Um, our favorite one from HelloFresh is that crispy bayou style tilapia, but this is probably our second favorite tilapia. Thursday night we did some tacos. I actually made this carnitas from Aldi. I have bought this before. I love when I can find it on Markdown. It's already seasoned pork shoulder roast. So I just put it in the crock pot with all of the like seasoning and stuff from the package. But then my friend Ashley, she did a video last year where she made this and she added some extra seasoning and some orange juice. So I tried that once and it was delicious. So now that's what I do. I just add in a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, um, some salt and pepper, and then half a cup to a cup of orange juice just enough to like fill the bottom of the crock pot and then I cook this on low for about six to eight hours. About an hour before we're ready to eat, I like to go in and use my little meat chopper thing to shred up the pork, and then I just like let it sit in that liquid for about an hour. And then with carnitas, you usually want it to be like kind of crispy. So I take it out, put it on a sheet pan, and spoon on some of that sauce or liquid, and then stick this under the broiler for about 10 minutes, but I stir it halfway through. We just had this on some hard taco shells. Some of us had sour cream, 
some of us had lettuce, some of us had tomatoes. I had a little bit of everything. Got some cheese on there. And then the kids also had some chips and salsa on the side. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. If you made it here all the way to the end, leave me a little smiley face emoji down there in the comments and let me know if you plan on trying any of these recipes. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll have a great week and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.